a moment many have been watching and waiting for. Well, should guilty officials be named and chained to Mr Zawi? Five months after Sue Gray's investigation began, she will finally deliver her report into lockdown breaking parties in Downing Street within days. Will we Morning. finally get the full story? But which high profile aides and civil servants will be named and blamed? A name circulating today, Cabinet Secretary Simon Case. Sue Gray has reportedly written to him and other high-profile civil servants she sees integral to the rule-breaking. The 5 p.m. deadline she's given to them to respond to her has now passed. The Met's £460,000 investigation concluded this week, handing out 126 fixed penalty notices, 73 to 48 women, and 53 were issued to 35 men. The three Downing Street residents got one fine each. Rishi Sunak, Boris Johnson and his wife Carrie for attending a short birthday gathering. So you've made your dissatisfaction with the Prime Minister already well known, but he's paid the fine and he's apologised. I think there would be a fine and unpleasant irony in the publication of the report if Mr Johnson were effectively to have a get out of jail card while around him senior civil servants were taking the rap for matters that ultimately must have been his responsibility because ultimately he is the man in charge of number 10 Downing Street and everything else flows from him and the culture of number 10. And further confusion today too over who called a recent meeting between the Prime Minister and Sue Gray. I can't tell you uh, who called the meeting because so why, why I don't... Can't I don't we, because did you not ask the question of number 10 before you came on this morning or did they just not tell you the answer? No, I, I tell you what the answer is. The answer is very simple. The answer is the Prime Minister will never intervene in Sue Gray's uh, investigation. But if Sue Gray's report is the first hurdle next week, the Prime Minister will then face further scrutiny by the Privileges Committee over whether he lied to Parliament about breaking Covid laws, potentially reigniting anger within his own party and voters. People are frustrated about Partygate, they're frustrated about the cost of living and I think if you've got these kind of images or very detailed written accounts of the types of parties that were taking place, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you see the public getting really quite viscerally angry again. After months waiting for the report... We need to see the outcome of the Sue Gray report. You know, I think it's right that we allow her to conclude that job. We must wait for the outcome of the, of the inquiry. It seems Boris Johnson's Partygate hangover might have several more days to run. Well, I'm joined now by Jill Rutter of the Institute for Government. Jill Rutter, thanks for joining us. The expectation seems to be that this report will be pretty damning, but reports suggest it may be the head of the civil service rather than the head of the government who takes the blame. Is that right? Is that how it should be? We don't know yet because we don't know what Sue Grace says. The question she's supposed to be answering is how did this culture of partying take hold of ignoring the lockdown restrictions and to what extent was it the civil service that failed to what extent were those judgment failures she called out in her earlier report to what extent were ministers responsible i mean the question of civil servants i wonder what you're hearing about how they feel this has been handled because there have been those reports that actually some of the younger staff, many women, came forward, fessed up, if you like, and other more seasoned staffers seem to have managed to avoid scrutiny. I wonder what you're hearing on that. I think there's bafflement, actually, at the approach that the Metropolitan Police have taken, that it does seem that they didn't, as far as I can see, do that much of an investigation. If it was a slam dunk that someone had already said they were at a party, then they got a fine. And... If they didn't, then the Met doesn't seem to have probed very hard. But it's very difficult because it's been so untransparent about what criteria they have used for saying these people have been fined for this event, yet other people who appear to have been at the same event haven't. So do you anticipate the Sue Gray report to be both more transparent and, in your view, more rigorous? Well, let's hope so, because I think that's what we need now, because the Met really hasn't cleared anything up very much so i think people now are looking to sue gray uh, she was pretty damning in that report that she produced at the end of january the anonymized report um so let's hope that what she really sheds light on is who exactly should we be taking to task for the fact that number 10 and the cabinet office seem to veer off on this track where they were repeatedly 
breaking lockdown rules. We now know that there was law breaking, so that's been established. That's about all the Met have really established. But the why did people think that they were immune from the rules that they created? That's really what Sue Gray's got to answer. And if she fails to answer it, then uh, you know we'll be back in a week's time, still all pretty mystified as to what went on. I mean, just very briefly on this, this controversial meeting, number 10 sources adamant the PM didn't call it. Sue Gray's office saying they didn't instigate it. I mean, you can read that in a number of ways, can't you? How, do you, how are you reading this? Well, I think it's just underlining that it's always been a deeply unsatisfactory position. The civil service, and Sue Gray is a civil servant, however much we sort of build up her personal integrity and independence, works for the government of the day. What I do find quite implausible are all these assertions that no one quite knows how this meeting materialised. It's pretty obvious if you work in a minister's private office who summons a meeting. Either Sue Gray asks for it or the Prime Minister asks to see Sue Gray. Those are the two things that happen. So it's bizarre that somebody can't Jill. answer that and put it straight.